Hi there, welcome to Patrick Scale Studio. My name's Patrick, I'll be your host. Now that we've wrapped up uh, USS Curtis Wilbur in 1-200 scale, I wanted to stick along with the same large scale because it makes great, big, impressive pieces. Uh, so I'm going to, again, stick with 1-200 scale, USS Yorktown CV-5. So thank you very much for joining me here during this introduction video. Uh, I'm not going to waste your time with reviewing the kit or anything like that. <clears throat> Nigel's modeling bench has already done so uh, for us a while ago, and I'll go ahead and link his video in my comments here. Um, but I just wanted to give you a quick <clears throat> idea of everything that I've gathered here in order to model this as I see fit. Um, the kit wants you to model her in 1942, uh, I believe close to June when she was sunk at the Battle of Midway. I'm going to roll back the clock on it a bit, though, and we're doing mid-year of 1940. Um, so I'll go ahead and get these out of the way. One of the books that I picked up here in order to do my research and uh, have an idea of her armament and the aircraft that she carried and everything like that right around 1940 was USS Yorktown from Design and Construction to the Battles of Coral Sea and Midway by David Doyle. This is an excellent publication with many great pictures showing the various stages of construction all the way through her sea trials and then it also includes a lot of great detail as far as <clears throat> you know aircraft um, different uh, structures different systems on the ship the hangar and if you continue on it shows Yorktown during during World War II. Again, fantastic reference book. I also picked up Worship Pictorial USS Yorktown CV-5 by Steve Wiper. And this is also a wealth of wonderful pictures. In fact, it's, there's even a picture right there of <clears throat> the ship listing heavily to port. I believe this is right before she capsized and sank. But more toward the beginning, you can kind of get a good idea of what USS Yorktown CB-5 looked like prior to joining World War II. You can see this great big Y on the funnel, on the superstructure. Uh, her deck, nice dark mahogany tone with these bright yellow deck markings. The aircraft also were a lot more colorful. At wonderful pictures. Should help give us an idea of what all we have to do. Uh, final book I got was That Gallant Ship USS Yorktown CV-5 by Robert Cressman. And what I love about this book is I get quite a bit more of the full story as far as actual actions that she took in World War II. The pictures <clears throat> aren't as big as they are in the other books but there are great pictures in here but you get again I said a lot of the story here um, and a lot of this goes really heavily into detail um, just about certain certain systems and structures that were being used there and then a lot of the action reviews there for, from World War II those aside now. So the last physical resource I got here was a set of plans here uh, from the floating dry dock. And as you can see, this is in scale 1 to one, 192. So it's a little bit bigger scale than 1 200. So anything I'm going to take from this and transfer to my model is going to have to be scaled back a little bit, but that's okay. As you can see, these plans were all drawn uh, as she was shown in May of 1940. So where I'm going to be modeling USS Yorktown is going to be very close to what these show here. Unfortunately, they are a little too large to fit on screen. So I'll be right back in a second here to show you some of the extras I got to go with the kit. Okay, so um, yeah, I know that says CB6 Enterprise. Um, and that's mainly just because there are no actual detail sets for 
USS Yorktown. Um, but I did purchase by Pontos uh, the CV6 Enterprise detail upset. Uh, and that's just mainly because Enterprise and Yorktown sister ships and a lot of the detail that's going to be in here will easily transfer over to Yorktown. Uh, for instance, uh, the five inch guns, there's eight of those. Um, the Mark 33 fire directors, the quad 1.1 inch guns. Now this set only has one of those. So I'm going to make up for that here. Um, you know, with another, with another extra here, but this set's already been widely, widely reviewed on YouTube and the internet as well. Um, but it's all there. I even checked for, um, some missing photo etch sheets, which I know that, uh, this set here has had problems with wooden deck. Me staining that a darker brown color. A lot of the resin that goes in there. Go ahead and put this back. And yeah, I understand I'm not going to use all of the parts in here, but a lot of this will come in handy for kind of fitting out the superstructure bit a little bit. Uh, there's going to be certain parts of this absolutely I won't be using, such as the degaussing cables, because those weren't present in mid 1940. Um, also, this. Uh, what is it? A CXAM uh, radar antenna right there. It's the what looks kind of like a box spring. I won't be putting that on as well. All right. So from Veteran Models, uh, U.S. Navy Observation Equipment sent for World War II. This will be handy. And right here, this is what's going to help me resolve the issue with only having uh, one of the quad 1.1 inch guns out of the Ponto set, uh, this will this will have all four, all four that will be required for that. Um, so one other thing I had to do was also source a STL file online for the 50 cal machine guns. They're not your typical 50 cal machine guns. They've got a pretty heavy mount and they've got water cooling jackets on them. So I will have a go at printing those out so I can adapt them to my build. Uh, so be right back here in just a sec with a little bit more. Lastly, I got some uh, anchor chain <clears throat> from HS Models. Um, I went over this a little bit here in uh, USS Curtis Wilbur video, um, but it is the correct link type in that there's a little cross member on each link. Um, the chains that come in the trumpeter kit and the Pontos kit both do not have that. They're incorrect. So I'm going to use this. It was really nice and easy to use on USS Curtis Wilbur, so I'm going to continue on with that. And then lastly, just like this is Curtis Wilbur, I've got nice brass pedestals when I'm ready to mount Yorktown to display base. All right. Be right back in a sec. So the last thing I wanted to discuss on this build video here was what I plan to do with this hull. Um, again, there are build review or kit reviews out there of the kit and all around the kit looks to be pretty good, but due to some molding limitations, um, at least it, from my perspective, there are a couple issues with this hull. Um, one up here, this is a bulbous bow. It needs to be fattened up a little bit here. Two, these portholes are all oblong shaped, uh, again, due to molding limitations. When they slide mold this, um, these right here, if you were looking at it straight from you know, straight from the side, like a profile, they would appear round, but as soon as you turn this a little bit, they turn into ovals. Um, one of the other things here is the hole's got a, almost like a bathtub shape. And if you look at the body plan and I got from the plans of it, that is not the case. And you see there is a curvature right up here on the hole. Um, and additionally, that also shows kind of how fat that hole should be right there uh, on the bulbous bow portion of it. Um, also, there is no plating detail at all on here, and there is an armor belt that is also not molded in and is missing. So we'll have to work on that a little bit. And then these right here, these platforms run flush with the hangar deck, and these were for hangar deck catapults. Um, th just the very idea of a hangar deck catapult is frightening. Um, I would hate to have been one of the pilots trying to take off uh, 
from one of those. But uh, these right here are an incorrect shape. They need to be shortened up a little bit and the shape changed a little bit. Um, and lastly, I'm gonna try to rectify these. These are a little bit exaggerated here for um, the hoss, hoss pipes uh, for the anchor chains. So that is my plan um, right off the bat, I'm thinking. And if you have other ideas or you've got experience doing this, please feel free to comment, let me know, email me, what have you. Um, I think I'm going to have to line the inside of this with quite a bit of sheet styrene so that I can go back here and sand this down a little bit so that again, I can get more of a match there. Um, in preparation for doing that, I have started to cut out some little profile templates here that I can hold up to the hole as I go in hopes of helping me recognize where I need to add and subtract material. But uh, for the time being right now, that is all I've gotten done. Um, by the next time we get together here, I should have some of this started here and I'll have all those templates cut out um, and I can begin to detail the process in which I'm gonna go ahead and get this hole into more of a correct appearance uh, for my perspective. Lastly, I wanted to thank you again for joining me. Uh, let you know that this is going to be a very long journey. We'll probably deviate into other projects. And I might even skip around in this build a little bit just to avoid tedium. Uh, really, really appreciate your support and joining me. If you have anything to point out or any suggestions, recommendations, or any way I can get better, please let me know in the comments. And until I see you again next time, stay safe, happy modeling.